Hi, this is JP from Another Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus. And this time we are looking into the Rogue Hero Pack that just came out. Uh, Rogue comes with a pre built protection deck. So this will be interesting as protection is one of my favorite uh, aspects to play Marvel Champions the card game. So without further delay, let's get started. So the Rogue Hero Pack comes with a pre-built protection deck. There is also a new modular set for the encounter decks and we'll look at that uh, right at the end after we have seen all the player cards come in this pack. But first let's start from the signature cards for Rogue. So first off we have the alter ego side of Rogue Anna Marie. And here she is, so uh, Anna Marie has three recovery, mutant traded, set up, set your touch upgrade aside, uh, withdrawn forced response after you change to this form, set the touch aside. And Rogue has hand size of 6 and 11 hit points. Uh, nothing really special, we have to see what the touch card does, but we'll go into that card in a moment. First, we look at the hero side. So, Rogue has a thwart of two, attack of two, defense of two. So, all around her in my book, uh, X Men traded, uh, skin contact action, attach touch to another character. You gain each of the attached character's traits until the end of the round, limit once per round. Force response after the player phase begins, find touch and set it aside. And uh, Rogue has a uh, hand size of 5 on hero mode and hit points of 11. So nothing special in the hero card, but let's see what the rest of her uh, signature set is all about. So first off we have the touched upgrade. It has a dash for cost, so you can't play it. So touched has a condition trait. If touched is attached to a minion, Rogue at Attacks gains overkill. If it's attached to villain, rogue gains retaliate one. If it's attached to an ally, rogue gains the aerial trait. And if it's attached to a hero, rogue gains stalwart. And it has the physical resource icon for those cards that key off of uh, upgrades in play, etc. So uh, it depends on which kind of card you attach touch to, uh, you'll get different benefits. So I think the most uh, powerful of these is, when playing true solo will be the villain. So you gain the retaliate one so you can take damage in protection but still uh, deal damage back. So that seems like a good synergy there. Next up we have the signature ally Gambit. Uh, Gambit is a 3 cost ally with 2 thwart, 2 attack and an asterisk. X-Men traded 3 hit points, Gambit enters play with 3 charge counters on him. Um, asterisk interrupt, when Gambit attacks, remove 1 charge counter from him, deal 1 damage to an enemy. And this can be committed as a wild resource. So, I think that's really good because you get uh, 3 attacks with damage of 3 uh, with the cost of 3. So uh, also you can splash the 1 damage to an enemy. It doesn't have to be the enemy Gambit is attacking. So that's good. So that seems like a good uh, um, ally to have in the signature set. Next we have Rogue's Jacket. So Rogue's Jacket is a 1 cost upgrade item traded. While touched is attached to a friendly character. Rogue gets plus 1 toward. While touch is attached to an enemy character, Rogue gets plus one attack, and this can be committed as a physical, not a physical, but an energy resource. So again, uh, you need to be mindful of uh, which um, card your touch is attached to. This will give you benefit to either thwart or attacking, depending on the card. So um, I think that's a good, good uh, mechanic. Uh, then we have going rogue There are actually three copies of this in the deck. So going rogue is a two cost event superpower thwart traded 
Hero action, thwart, remove three threat from a scheme if rogue has aerial, remove two additional threat, uh, retaliate, confuse an enemy, stalwart, draw one card. And this can be committed as a men mental resource. So again, a king of, of where the touch is attached to, this card uh, gains different abilities. So that's, uh, that seems like a good mechanic also. Next we have Southern Cross and there are three copies of this. So Southern Cross is a three cost event, attack superpower traded, hero action attack deals six damage to an enemy. If rogue has aerial, this attack deals two additional damage, a retaliate, stun that enemy and stalwart draw one card. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So again, uh, you have to be mindful of where the touch is attached to if you want the correct benefit from this card. Next we have Energy Transfer, again an event and two copies this time. So Energy Transfer is a two cost event, super well traded. Hero action attached uh, touch to a character other than Rogue and deal two damage to that character. Uh, heal two damage from Rogue and ready her. You gain each of the attacks character traits until the end of the round. So even though you uh, defeat an enemy, you get the traits from that. So that's good if you need those traits. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Then uh, we have Bulletproof Bell. And there are two copies of this. So Bulletproof Bell is a one cost event, defense and superpower traded, hero interrupt, defense. Uh, when an enemy with touch attached to it attacks, prevent all damage from that attack and gain a tough status card. So, and this can be committed as a physical resource. So again, if you're playing against a really tough villain, you just want to attach the touch to that. You get the retaliate, then you also ignore the damage when you play this defense event, so that's powerful. Next up uh, we have a Superpower Adaptation. It's a zero cost event and there are three copies actually in the deck. And it is a zero cost event, Superpower Traded. Uh, hero action, if touch is attached to a friendly character, search its owner's discard pile for an event that belongs to the same classification as the character's identity, specific aspect or basic, add that event to your hand. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So this is um, like the opposite of the bulletproof bell. So uh, when you attach touch to a friendly character, you get really strong benefits from this card. And that is all of the signature um, set for Rogue. So next up we'll head up uh, to see what cards come in the Rogue's Hero Packs protection cards. So first off we have a protection ally Iceman. So Iceman is a 3 cost ally with 1 fort and 2 attack X-Men traded and 3 hit points. Iceman enters play with three freeze counters on him. Response, after a minion enters play, remove one freeze counter from the Iceman, stun that minion. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So this is a pretty good three cost ally to have. So you can stun those minions that come out if Iceman is in play for three times uh, because there are three counters. And uh, yeah. Seems like a good protection ally. Next up we have Karma. And Karma is a 4 cost uh, protection ally with 0 thwart and 0 attack. Psionic X-Men traded, 1 hit point. That seems odd, but we'll see. Uh, so response after you play Karma from your hand, choose a non-elite minion. While Karma is in play, take control of that minion and treat it as a controlled ally with a blank text box. Its thwart is equal to, the, to its printed scheme and it takes one consequential damage after it thwarts or attacks. Okay, and this can be committed as a uh, uh, energy resource. So Karma is quite interesting. Uh, you want to play her in a, a scenario with a high amount of minions. So possibly uh, the project... Mi uh, 
what, a project wide awake where there are a lot of sentinel minions running around so you want to have this in play so you can control one of those and just uh, use that to attack uh, other sentinels so an interesting uh, ally for sure uh, then we have a third new uh, protection ally armor and armor is a two cost ally with one fort and two at uh, one attack x-men trade at two hit points play only if your identity has the x-men trade and uh, she has toughness so and can be committed as a physical resource so pretty straightforward ally to have uh, costs two you just play her onto the table uh, she has tough so uh, you will defend once with her then just attack or defense ag again or something like that so nothing really special uh, then we have unfathomable uh, it is a reprint with new art I'll just show the art for a moment so uh, so again this is just the same as the uh, earlier unflappable, I mean. So it, it is a one cost upgrade condition. Uh, play under any player's control maximum per player. If you defend against an attack and take no damage, exhaust unflappable, draw one card. So nothing new. The art is okay in my book. Next, uh, we have Judoka skill. So there are three copies of this. So Judoka skill is a two cost upgrade skill. Use three judo counters, max one per player. Uh, interrupt when you defend against an enemy attack. Remove one judo counter from here. That enemy gets minus two attack for this attack. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So uh, we'll see how this works. Not uh, really excited for that card, but it seems like a decent one-off card maybe. Then we have a preemptive strike, three copies of this also. Mm, have we seen this before? I think not. Well, preemptive strike is a one cost event defense, hero interrupt defense when a boost card is turned face up while the villain attacks, cancel all boost icons on this that card. Then deal one damage to the villain for each boost icon canceled this way. And this has a energy resource. Uh, we might have seen this. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember all of the cards, but yeah See uh, the art is okay again Then we have a surely new card not today uh, three copies of this so uh, Not today is a one cost event defense straight at hero interrupt defense when your hero defense against an attack It gets plus two defense for that attack if you take no damage from this attack remove two threat from a scheme so this is really great for protection so you get to remove threat while defending so that that is really good i think i really like this card and this can be committed as a mentor resource so definitely going into all of my defend uh, protection decks from now on then we have defensive energy two copies of this so uh, it is a resource card for protection, max two per deck, hero interrupt when you spend this card to play a defense event, draw one card and this can be committed as a, a wild resource. So uh, it is basically deck shuff, uh, cycling when you defend or play defense uh, events with this. So that, that seems like a good one. So the, those were all the new or, or all the protection cards. Uh, next, well, we look at the um, basic cards. So first off we have uh, basic support Moira McTaggart. So Moira uh, is a two cost support persona traded. Play only if your identity has the mutant trait. Response after a mutant alter ego changes into her into hero form, exhaust Moira McTaggart. That hero's controller draws one card and this can be committed as a, a mental resource. I'm not really liking this in protection because usually protection um, players won't go to alter ego that much but you can play yeah you can play that under any other players control so not not liking the synergy with the pre-built here uh, then we have X-Gene, three copies of this. X-Gene is a one cost to up 
upgrade, play only if your identity has the mutant trait, max one per player, uh, resource, exhaust X gene, generate a wild resource for an identity specific event, and this can be committed as a, a wild resource. So, um, a decent uh, resource generation card. Next, we have the team up card for Rogue and Gambit. Beauty and the Thief. <clears throat> it is a two cost event. Attack and Thwart traded. Team up card for Gambit and Rogue, max one per deck. Hero action, attack and or Thwart. Deal four damage to an enemy. Remove four threat from a scheme. And this can be committed as uh, energy resource. So I'm liking this card. It's really powerful when you get Gambit and Rogue in play at the same time. So definitely if you are playing two player with Gambit and Rogue, both should have this card. This is a really good one. Next uh, we have the new art uh, basic resource card, so energy, genius and strength. So that is the whole pre-built deck. Uh, next let's look at the uh, obligation and nemesis sets. So first off we have Deadly Touch, which is the Rogue Obligation. Give to Anima Replayer. Uh, if Touch is attached to a friendly, uh, friendly character, deal 2 damage to that character, discard this card. If Touch is attached to a friendly character, uh, not attached to a friendly character, place 2 threat on the main scheme, discard this card. Okay, well, uh, this uh, is... Uh, Again, one of those a bit different obligations that won't leave play, so it will stay in the encounter deck for the duration of the game. You cannot remove it from the game. So I'm liking that because th that that is really a uh, uh, good good obligation for Rogue in in theme because her touch is deadly. <laughs> it is deadly touch. Uh, then we have the. Rogue Nemesis set, which is uh, Mystique. So, Mystique is a uh, minion with one scheme and one attack. A Brotherhood of Mutant traded, Elite traded, and six hit points. Toughness, uh, Villainous, so a tough cookie to defeat. Forced response. After Mystique engages you, search the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for a copy of Misled Treachery and shuffle it into your deck. Okay. And uh, Mystique has three boost icons, so not hitting a lot, but really tough to get rid of. And uh, well, uh, she has villainous, so that will make her hit or quad a lot more. Next, we have the side scheme uh, Mystique's manipulation. So. Mystic's Manipulation, uh, when defeated, uh, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of Misled Treachery and shuffle it into your deck. It has an acceleration icon, uh, comes into play with two threat per player and two boost icons. So I'm seeing a trend here that Misled is a key thing of this set. So let's look at that. There are three copies of it. So Misled is a treachery. It uh, has the shapeshifter trait. When revealed, shuffle this card into your deck. This card gets search. Force response. After this card enters your hand, place two threat on the main scheme. You may discard this card from your hand and at the end of the player phase, like any other card. So this clocks your hand for a turn, uh, adds threat to the main scheme. So really, uh, really annoying. So when you reveal this card, and it has only one boost icon, but yeah, the main point of this card is that when you reveal this, it shuffles into your deck and will uh, slow down your deck cycle and be an empty card in your hand. So that was the uh, Nemesis set. Interesting one. Uh, I'm, I'm liking that it's not a, like a, a really heavy hitting enemy unless you draw a bad boost icon for the villainous for mystic and then lastly let's look at the new uh, leadership uh, aspect card that comes in this set uh, or this hero pack this is the only outside of protection and base card that comes in the deck or the or the pack so medlab three copies of that 
MATLAB is a one plus support location, max one per player. Response after an ally is defeated by consequential damage. Exhaust MATLAB place it here. Limit one ally at a time. Alter ego action. Exhaust MATLAB. Play the ally here as if it was in your hand. It enters play exhausted. Okay, well, if you really have to keep one ally in play from over and over again, MATLAB seems like a really good one. But that means you need to go to Alter ego to revive that ally. Uh, lastly, I said at the beginning that we have a new modular set, and it is the reverse modular set, so let's look at that. First off, we have Donald Pierce. So, Donald Pierce is a minion, one scheme, one attack, elite reaver, traded, six hit points, teamwork, reaver, villainous, force response. After Donald Pierce engages, you reveal the topmost reaver minion from the discard pile. And this has three boost icons. So uh, the, the teamwork means that if we have another reaver traded minion or villain in play, those activate when this uh, another team uh, teamwork card that shares the trait comes into play. So that that is nasty. Uh, so that is Donald Pierce. Next up we have Skullbuster. That looks like a knockoff uh, crossbones, but it is what it is. So Skullbuster is a minion with two scheme, two attack, reaver traded, five hit points, teamwork, reaver, toughness, force response. After Skullbuster engages you, place one threat on the main scheme for each reaver minion engaged with you. And this can be committed as... Uh, no, uh, I mean this has two boost icons. Getting uh, player cards and encounter deck cards mixed up here. Okay, well, pretty straightforward. Forward. Uh, next we have uh, Bone Breaker. Um, Bone Breaker is a minion with one scheme and three attack. Reaver traded, five hit points. Teamwork, Reaver toughness. Uh, I'm seeing a trend forming here. These guys mainly have toughness or something bad. Okay, well. Uh, Force interrupt when after Bone Breaker engages, you take one indirect damage and uh, for each reaver mini engage with you so you really want seem to want to get rid of these uh, reaver minions as fast as possible and this has two boost icons next up we have weight coal uh, weight coal is a minion with one scheme and two attack reaver traded three hit points team teamwork reaver when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of the cybernetic enhancements attachment and attach it to weight call shuffle. Well, we'll see soon enough what that is. And uh, weight call has one boost uh, icon. Next, we have Murray Reese. Murray Reese is a minion with one scheme and two attack reaver traded, three hit points, teamwork reaver. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of the cybernetic enhancement attachment and attach it to Murray Reese Shuffle. So, same ability as with the last one. Yeah, I'm just double checking the wording, it's it identical. So, uh, one boost icon here. So, these are just the same minion with different titles, basically. So those were uh, all the minions. Next we have uh, a side scheme, the Reavers. So uh, when defeated, the player who defeated this scheme discards cards from the encounter deck until a Reaver minion is discarded, then reveals that minion and this has a extra encounter card icon and uh, comes into play with five threats and three boost items. So, you basically want to get rid of this, but then you get a minion, so that that's bad, but it is what it is. Seems like a really nasty encounter set. Uh, then we have two copies of this uh, cybernetic enhancement. And uh, it is an uh, attachment tech trait that attaches to a minion, otherwise this card gets searched. Attached minion cannot take damage. Whoa, that's bad. Force response. After attached minion attacks, discard cybernetic at enhancement, and this gives a plus one uh, attack boost to that minion. So, 
that was everything that encounters that looks really nasty. I need to try that out when I try out But yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to playing Rogue's Hero uh, pre-built deck with the protection aspect. So um, not sure which scenario from the Mutant Genesis box I will play. Uh, probably I will splash the reverse set into that counter deck, removing the original suggested uh, deck or, or the set from that um, setup, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna sleep this up, try it out in a scenario, but hope you guys like this uh, Hero Pack Focus. Thanks for watching and until next time.